Okay, this particular job requires a small drop-in sink. The problem we have here is we have a custom-made brass sink that doesn't have a template. So we had to actually make our own template here. Now this is extremely important. Now, my recommendation would be try to get a template. If you don't, you're going to have to construct one. What we did is we made this template, and you can see the template fits over the sink itself. We wanted to make sure that it fits securely because if it's too big, we can't add to the stone. So we only want to cut once, we measure three or four times. Now what we've done here, you can remember when we did our templating portion, we actually marked the center line of our sink and we marked how far the sink was going to come in. So we have a reference mark here and all we're going to do is simply place our template over those marks, line it up, double check it, make sure it's ready to go, and now we're going to trace that outline. making sure to hold the template securely because you don't want it shifting on you. And if it's a big template, you can probably have a helper come in and just actually help you hold the template down, or sometimes you can tape them. This one is small enough that we really don't have to worry about it. We can hold it pretty securely. Got it traced, and then it's carefully lifted up. We have an outline of our sink. Now, we have straight lines here, here, here on four sides, but we have this radius, and there's several ways to handle that radius. One way would be to just slowly make some small cuts in there, which is called comb cutting, which takes very long to do. The easiest way is to take a core bit. Take a core bit to the size of the radius, core out the corners, all four corners. You'll have a perfect arc, and that's what we're gonna do here. Now, we're gonna make these four holes first Flip the stone over, then we're going to show you how to put some rods in the back of the stone. Flip it back over and make our straight cuts. So let's see how it's done. Okay, with our sinkhole here on our island, we drilled four core holes in each corner. Now what we could do at this point is finish the cutout by cutting the sink entirely out. However, this island is so large that I'm afraid that if we try to move it, it'll crack. So what we're going to do is what we call a plunge cut or what we call a score cut. In other words, we're going to take this saw blade here, we're only going to go down just a little tiny bit, make our score mark, and then stop, and then take this piece, move it to the field, and finish our cutout in the field. So let's get started. Add water and gently push the blade into the stone itself, making sure it's all the way down, and then slowly move forward making your score cuts. Okay, now we're ready to rod this particular countertop, and let me explain what that is. We have a sink opening here, and anytime you have a sink opening, you have a very weak area. The stone can break very easily. So what we basically do is we take these steel rods, and we cut a groove in the stone, and you'll see how that's done in a second, and we insert them into the stone with a little bit of glue, and that strengthens that area. We let them dry, we flip the stone over, and we'll finish our cutout. We're good to go. Let's go with it. When making your grooves with a rotting blade, again, nice steady movements, plunge down into the stone, plenty of water, and gently push forward. Okay, we've already cut our grooves, the stone is now good and dry, and now we're ready to insert the rods. Now what's really important is these particular type of rods come with an oil on them, so they need to be cleaned thoroughly before you insert them. So what we're going to do is take some acetone, put a little acetone on a paper towel or a clean white rag, and make sure they're good and clean. Well, any oil on there. If there's any oil on there, they're not going to stick and they're going to fall out of the groove and we don't want that. 
And you can see the oil on the rag here. Next, what we're going to do is take our glue, put it in a container. Do not use a styrofoam cup because it'll melt. Pour enough glue in there. I like using a flowing grade uh, simply because it allows it to flow into the groove and any inconsistencies in the stone. You want to add your hardener. In this case, we're going to add approximately 2% hardener. This stuff sets up pretty quick, so you do want to work fast once you do add the hardener. Add the hardener. Mix it up thoroughly. Take your time mixing it. Don't, don't, uh, don't skimp here and try to save time. Once it's mixed, then simply all you need to do is take your glue, let it flow into the groove. One. And two. Next, take your rod, insert it into the groove, making sure it's completely submerged. If you want to use stainless, that's okay. As long as it's completely submerged, I don't think you need stainless because if it's completely encapsulated, it's not going to rust on you again. Okay, that looks good. That's all set. What I'll do next is get rid of the excess glue, scrape that off, allow that to dry, and we're good to go.